Today we have some exciting info on Snowdrop engine upgrades. Let's break it down. Recently I made a video about Massive's new Star Wars game and how it would affect the Division franchise. I figured why not go check out and see if I could find anything on the Snowdrop engine. Well, it turns out I found an article from Ubisoft about how Snowdrop will be evolving to meet next-gen opportunities. I will not read through the entire article, but what I'm going to focus on are the main points about how they will be changing it for next-gen. The article reads, With the advent of next-generation consoles, Snowdrop programmers are pushing the engine forward to make the most of the opportunities that it offers. Near the top of the list, unsurprisingly, is ray tracing. It is one of the most notable features that we are working on, says Christian. It is a big R&D effort. In fact, it's one of the biggest R&D features that we've ever taken on. With the potential to deliver near photorealistic graphics, you can understand why Snowdrop's engineers are prioritizing this development. Although it's been supported on high-end graphics cards for the past few years, Ray Tracing's arrival on the next wave of consoles has made it an opportunity that cannot be ignored. There's a lot of coding work to make it really fast in real-time graphics when you need to have 30 or 60 frames per second. But that's where we're going, says Christian. It's also something that Snowdrop lets you turn on and off. For example, you can have ray tracing on the next-gen consoles, but turn it off on lower-end PCs if it's too demanding. As Alexander explains, Snowdrop can provide more than just an on and off switch for ray tracing. Snowdrop also has software-based ray tracing that runs in compute jobs on the GPU. Ray tracing is obviously very popular right now because the new consoles and graphics cards that have the hardware to support it, but this alternative doesn't demand specific hardware. The vision for real-time RTX is not unexpected, but for them to make it where it's just toggle it within the engine, no problem, I think that that is very interesting. Not only to make it a toggle, they're also planning to have a separate version that is software based for rigs that cannot support hardware based RTX, which is a great thing for consumers. Another major R&D project is underway at Massive so that the Snowdrop engine takes full advantage of this increase. We're looking at shorter load times and maximizing data throughput, Christian explains. This is really important for all the textures that you see in games. On the current generation of consoles, it might take a minute or two to load into the game. And after that, things could look a bit blurry for a while before the textures really started to come in. With the new generation, you will see faster loading times and then textures filling out much more quickly. We're hoping to get throughput of texture data at something like 1 or 2 gigabytes a second, whereas previously, you might only get 50 megabytes a second. I think something like this is massive, that, that, that's pretty large. They're aiming for a 50% increase in textured data throughput. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a big tech savvy guy, but this seems like it could have a major impact in fidelity and engine efficiency that could be huge for future snowdrop games like Star Wars and Avatar. The ray tracing capabilities are exciting but the most significant hardware development in the new consoles might actually turn out to be the shift to SSD storage. The quicker loading speeds will be is obvious to anyone who's played the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, but you might not just realize how big the improvement is. The difference between SSDs and mechanical hard drives isn't that SSDs are twice or three times as fast, says Christian. It's more in the order of 10 to 20 times faster. That is not the only way that Snowdrop is being shaped by the possibilities of the new consoles. As Alexander explains, the engine is being programmed to allow for new rendering methods. In the new generation of consoles, there is quite a big architectural change in the GPUs, including how they process meshes and geometry. It's changed in a major way, so we are looking to take advantage of this by structuring the rendering in a different manner. The new consoles support mesh shading, which is something that lets objects be split up into little pieces, so for a character, a hand might be one piece, a nose might be another piece, and so on. If things aren't actually on the screen or if they're occluded, then we don't have to render them. 
we could just skip them, but if you have a character who is only half in screen, you have to waste time processing and rendering that whole character, even though a lot of it isn't into the final picture. With mesh shading, we can split things up into finer pieces, meaning there are less things to render in total. That makes it faster, and making it faster leads to better graphics. Other engines have this feature in place for the previous console generations, but they've had some issues, some inefficiencies and bottlenecks. With the new next gen hardware, we can see a way to do this more efficiently, so we are working towards implementing it in Snowdrop. I think it is good to see that they are diving deep into mesh shading, which is an innovation of the geometry pipeline. Uh, this is simpler, it's more flexible and efficient. It's a new model that will make these games look better and run faster. I'm interested to see how this will manifest itself when fully integrated. Now, what do I think this is going to look like when it actually comes here? From what we've seen so far in Division 1 and 2, the full release capabilities have been scaled down compared to the Snowdrop Engine tech demos. So I think we will see improvements like transition from dynamic global illumination into real-time RTX. Uh, more dynamic weather simulation because of the hardware improvements, better procedural destruction, and higher quality textures and texture density for more realistic graphic improvements to Snowdrop. As a person that is looking forward to seeing how many 120 FPS games we can get on these new consoles, I don't really think that these engine improvements are going to make that happen. If anything, they're going to make it not happen. I think the target will be 60 FPS and they'll be saying okay let's juice out every bit of graphical fidelity that we can on top of this. Thank you for dropping by, if you enjoyed the video hit the respective buttons down below. It's been a pleasure, Chungus out.